Hey everybody, so in a previous video during the 2021 Christmas Bonanza, we took a trip over to Legacy Station to pick up the new Lionel Vision Line Santa Fe 21010 and we did a little run time with it and talked a little bit about its features, but it was kind of a brief overview. So today, we'll be taking a closer look at this fantastic model, and it's coming up right now on Eric's Trains. All right, so let's start things off with a little bit of history on the 21010 And By the way, the name 21010 refers to the wheel arrangement. It means you've got two wheels up front, 10 drive wheels here, another 10 drive wheels here, and then two wheels on the trailing truck. So the 21010 wheel arrangement was exceptionally rare with the only two examples being the Santa Fe 3000 class like we have here and the Virginian AE class. Now while the Virginian AE class locomotives were fairly successful with up to 31 years of service, their Santa Fe counterparts were not so fortunate. Overall they performed poorly and that resulted in only three years of service and all examples would eventually be converted back into the 2102 locomotives from which they were originally built. And unfortunately there are no examples of the 21010 locomotives from either the Santa Fe or the Virginian that were preserved. All right, now let's talk about Lionel's rendition of the 21010. So the significance of the Vision Line 21010 is that it was the first Vision Line locomotive that Lionel released back in 2010. And at the time, it was seen as a weird choice for the inaugural locomotive of the Vision Line series. It's not a very well-known engine, there weren't that many examples, and so a lot of people wondered why Lionel chose to do this. So it turns out, or at least I've been told, that the reason Lionel chose to introduce the Vision Line with the 21010 was because Neil Young, the musician, asked Lionel to do that. As I'm sure many of you know, Neil Young was a big player in Lionel back in the 90s. He was actually a part owner and was responsible for the development of rail sounds and TMCC. So he had a big role in the history of Lionel, and because of that, they allowed him to choose the first Vision Line engine. So we got the 21010 -10 So Lionel reissued the Vision Line 21010 -10 in their 2021 Volume 1 catalog, and these began arriving at dealers in late December of 2021. And in fact, if you've seen my previous video, I actually went to pick this up at the train store on New Year's Eve 2021. So on pages 8 and 9 of the 2021 Volume 1 catalog, Lionel offered four different versions of the 21010 -10 which contrasts with the first time they did this model where they only released a single version, road number 3000. So they did road number 3001 that we have here that has the white wheels and the polished rods. They did road number 3009 with black wheels and darkened rods. They did road number 3005 in a beautiful black bonnet paint scheme, and then road number 3008 in a gorgeous valley flyer paint scheme, which I almost ordered, but I decided to get this one instead. And, you know, to tell you the truth, I kind of wish I had gotten that valley flyer paint scheme because it looks incredible. Maybe I'll be able to grab one down the road. We'll see. Now, as you can see, this locomotive is massive, and the stats reflect that. The combined length of the engine and the tender is right at 30 inches. The combined weight is 11 pounds, 14 ounces. Now, heavy locomotives usually have pretty good pulling power, and this one sure does. When tested, this locomotive produced 3 pounds, 5 ounces of pulling power, which is fantastic. And of course, because this locomotive is so long, it's going to require a wide curve to operate. The minimum required curve needed to run this engine is 072. Something that I like about the 21010 is that even though it's a massive steam locomotive, I mean, it's only a couple inches shorter than a big boy. It's kind of got this refined, elegant look to it. And I think that's down to two factors. First of all, even though the boiler is quite long, it's also kind of lean compared to something like a big boy or a challenger. It doesn't have that stockiness 
of a big boy or challenger. And then second, you've got that turtle back tender, which is totally cool and sets this locomotive apart from anything else. As far as features go, this has everything you'd expect on a high-end Vision Line model like this. You've got Legacy Command and Bluetooth on board, and then of course you've got Legacy Rail Sounds, but because this is a Vision Line model, you've got stereo Legacy Rail Sounds. So in addition to the sound system back in the tender, like you've got on most locomotives, you've also got a sound system up in the locomotive, and that way when you do stuff like blow the whistle, the whistle sound come from the front of the locomotive in addition to the sound system back in the tender and the effect is amazing. When you blow the whistle on this thing it's got this really cool stereo effect. It probably won't come across too well over video but believe me it's incredible. And of course for those of you who have owned Vision Line models in the past you know exactly what I'm talking about. The stereo sounds make a huge difference. And because this is a Vision Line model it does have a lot of cool smoke effects. So there are three smoke units on this locomotive. You've got the traditional fan-driven smoke unit for the smokestack, of course. Then you've got another fan-driven smoke unit for the whistle steam smoke effect back here. And then there's a third smoke unit for the steam blowdown effect. And when that's activated, right about here in the firebox area, you get these jets of smoke shooting out both sides of the locomotive to emulate a steam blowdown. It looks really cool as you can see. And of course this model plays the appropriate sounds whenever you activate the whistle or the blowdown effect and you'll hear those sounds in just a moment. And the last trick that this locomotive has up its sleeve is the swinging bell effect which I have to admit is my favorite vision line effect of all time at least up until now. And you know what? The original 21010-2 that Lionel did back in 2010 also had the swinging bell effect, and because it was the first Vision Line locomotive that Lionel did, it may well be that the swinging bell effect, the modern swinging bell effect, debuted on this model back in 2010. Now I say the modern swinging bell effect because Lionel made several attempts at swinging bells over the years, going all the way back to the pre-war era, but the modern swinging bell effect, the most realistic one, I think it might have debuted with this model back in 2010. And as I said, of all the cool features Lionel has done with the Vision Line over the years, this remains my favorite. And it's been really cool to see it trickle down into some non-Vision Line locomotives. It's still pretty rare, but every now and then they'll sneak it into a non-Vision Line steam locomotive like they did with the Pensy H10 a couple years ago. Going in for a closer look, check out this pilot. It looks fantastic. There's safety tread all on the top. And then we've got a coupler cut bar, a nice dummy scale coupler, which can be swapped out for a dummy O-gauge coupler that's in the box when you buy the locomotive if you want to double head it or something like that. And then we've got these nice hoses and so forth. It looks great. On the front of the smoke box, they've got this little hinged piece here that opens up like that. Pretty cool. And then above that, they've got an operational headlight with lighted number boards on either side. Here's one of the two bi-directional classification lights. You'll see how these operate in just a moment. And then right here, we've got a legible builder's plate. Here's a look at some of the running gear and drive wheels. And as I said earlier, the main difference between road number 3001 and 3009 is right in here. So 3001 has the white rims and the polished side rods whereas 3009 has the black rims and the darkened side rods. Here in the firebox area, right here is the pipe for the steam blowdown effect, and there's one of these on the other side as well, and as you saw when it's activated, smoke will shoot out of these pipes and give the illusion of a steam blowdown. Up on top, there's the smokestack. We've got a sand dome here with a cap that can be popped off to reveal a few controls. We've got the run program switch, the Bluetooth on-off switch, and the main smoke on-off switch. And that's held down magnetically, like that. Got some nice add-on pipes and hand-painted details going on here, and then lighted number boards on either side. Right here is one of the most distinctive features of the 210-102, and that's these big giant pipes where the two boilers meet. I said earlier that the 210-102 was basically a combination of two 210 locomotives, and here's where that happened. They've got this band here with the cast-in rivets and then these big pipes up above. And then you've also got add-on metal handrails and this nice throttle assembly. In front of the bell, we've got another sand dome. And just like the one up front, the top of this can be removed to reveal a few things. It's a little tougher to remove because it's got this rubber gasket. And that's because right up front, it's got the fill hole 
for the smoke fluid that goes to the whistle steam smoke effect and the steam blowdown effect. And then there are two control switches. This switch controls the steam blowdown smoke unit, and then there's a switch for the whistle steam smoke unit as well. And behind the bell, there's a steam dome, and the top of this can be removed as well, but there's nothing under there. And I think that may be a leftover from the original 21010 I think on the original model, they may have had another smoke fill hole here for one of these two back smoke units, but they've since combined it into a single fill hole under that sand dome, and so there's no longer anything needed under here, but you can still take it off like that. And then back here, we've got a little brass whistle where the whistle steam smoke effect emanates. We've got some brass pop-off valves and then a little dynamo back here as well. And then there's a vent on the cab roof that opens up like that. And here's the gap between the locomotive and the tender. Not bad, and there is a hinged drop plate right here, which helps to add to the realism. Here's a look at the inside of the cab. It's pretty dark in there. I've got a flashlight shining in there to help out. There's a red glow in the firebox when the engine is in operation. There's lots of hand-painted knobs and valves and gauges. There are two hand-painted crew figures, and the interior of the cab is illuminated. And then we've got the gorgeous turtleback tender. It's not often that I refer to a tender as gorgeous, but it really is with this cool slope on the back. There's a little cow catcher down here, which is really cool. I guess these things would run in reverse from time to time. And then we've got a coupler cut bar and a brake wheel. There's a set of stairs going up the back of the slope. Then we've got this curved metal grab iron and then a backup light with lighted number boards. Up on top of the tender, we've got a couple add-on metal grab irons, and then we've got two more bicolored classification lights, and then we've got several hatches that open up. So there's this one, this one, and then these two hatches here. And in case you were curious, here's what it looks like on the underside of the locomotive. We've got four pickup rollers for center rail power, that's good. And then look at all these drive wheels, 20 drive wheels. Now most of these do not have flanges, and that is what allows this thing to get around 072 curves. If all these wheels had flanges, the minimum required curve would be something like 0180 or something crazy like that. So it's probably a good thing that not all these wheels have flanges. And then there are four traction tires. We've got two here and two up here. And then here's the underside of the tender. We've got two more pickup rollers. The two speakers for the sound system are right here. And then on this truck right here is the sensor for the Lionel LCS sensor track if you choose to use one. All right, the last segment we're gonna do is WMGFT, what my girlfriend thinks. So you were at Legacy Station when I picked this up and you said it was your favorite locomotive that I've got so far. So what things do you like about it? So my favorite parts, um, it's got a really nice color scheme, a lot of really good detail, but the light in, per light in the back and in the front, I really like and the way that the bell moves and it sounds phenomenal. <laughs> well, there you have it. And the real final thing we're gonna do is what Frisco thinks. Here's Frisco, he's my newest Russian blue. He's a little under a year old now, about 10 months old. And we'll see what Frisco thinks of the new 21010 -10 Well, I think he approves of it. <laughs> All right, without further ado, let's start this thing up. As you heard in the startup sequence, these things do have road name and road number specific dialogue. So when you do the crew talk sequences, you'll hear them refer to 3001 like this. 3001 at Albuquerque, ready to make our pull. Can we get permission to occupy the main? Over. Please hold at your location. Out. Or this. Dispatch, this is 3001. Air is made. Break test complete. Are we clear, Paul? Over. You are good to go. Out. All right, here's the whistle, and just like most modern steam engines that Lionel is making, you get a choice of five whistles and five horns. This is my favorite whistle by far. <laughs> But 
here's a sampling of the other four. And then you also get five bell tones. So here's the default bell tone. And then here's number two. Number three. Number four. And number five. And here's the steam blowdown effect. It looks and sounds so awesome. And again, that's happening on both sides of the locomotive. And then we've got the bicolor classification light feature, which works on both the locomotive classification lights and the classification lights back on the tender. So on the locomotive, you've got green, or you can do white, or you can turn them off completely. And here's the classification lights on the tender. Although unlike the ones up on the locomotive, these do red, white, and off rather than green, white, and off.
Dispatch, this is 3001. We are done for the day. Head into the register room to sign out. Out. All right, so there you have it. A closer look at the new Lionel Vision Line 21010 A fantastic locomotive, and I am thrilled that they brought it back. Hopefully, they'll be reissuing some other Vision Line engines in the near future. I'd like them to do the 700E again, and I'd really like them to do the Pensy CC2 again as well. But we'll see what happens. Now, if you want to get one of these, they're not cheap. The retail price on one of these locomotives is right at $2,500. Yeah, very expensive. Now, that is the retail price. If you go through a good Lionel dealer, you can probably get a bit of a discount off that retail price. And as always, if you're looking for a good Lionel dealer, try my favorite train store, which is Legacy Station. You can find them on the web at LegacyStation.com or give them a call at 770-339-7780. If you'd like to support this channel, I would greatly appreciate it. That can be done through Patreon at Patreon.com slash Ericstrains. Patreon supporters get access to all sorts of perks and benefits, and you can read about those benefits on my Patreon page. I'd like to thank all of my current Patreon supporters. Your support means the world not only to me, but to the future of this channel. And finally, if you'd like to buy an Eric Strange t-shirt or anything else I might be selling, check out the Eric Strange online store at ericstrains.com store. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm Eric Siegel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.